In May 2014, near the end of my fieldwork across China, I took a few days of holiday in a small town near Shanghai. I felt like I deserved a few days without being glued to social media, transcribing interviews, or mulling over a mass of field notes that looked anything but a dissertation in the making. Most of my previous months of fieldwork had been in cities. This was a small town. I studied urban China, and here I was safely away from the compulsion of making sense of things through writing them down. So one day, I ended up sitting in a sunny courtyard with a few people I had mostly just met. We were drinking tea, and someone was playing an acoustic guitar. And during a lull in the conversation, a woman next to me asked me about where I was from, and I reciprocated. I lived here for seven years now. This is the seventh year. I have a small shop nearby. You can call me Yang Yang. No, just whatever Yang Yang, no particular characters. Before this, I lived in Shanghai for three years, in Hong Kong district, close to Lushun Park. And before Shanghai, I was in Shenzhen, and before that, Ningbo, doing odd jobs because I don't have a degree, just high school. It's a long story. It was a long story, and I was not on fieldwork, so I didn't ask to hear it. But I didn't have to. After a silence that in my memory feels like it stretched over minutes, she continued. The village where I was born is near Kunming, and even though it is actually quite close to the city, it takes hours to get there. It's all mountain roads, winding. My village has a population of 25 people, but in fact it's just part of a village. The big village is divided in three parts, and ours is the Xiaochun, the small village, and the Xiaochun is divided in Gaochun, Zhongchun, and Xiaochun. 25-ish people. The big village has 500 households or so. It's right on a mountain, and on one side it's really hot. You can grow plants that like the kind of weather, but as soon as you go up, it's freezing. It's just like winter climate. Until the age of 10, I never went out of my village. I was one of those kids who grew up barefoot in the rice fields or herding cows around. At some point, someone came in from the sports school, and I asked him if there was any competition to get in. And he said, yes, the kid who runs faster gets in. So I run as fast as I could and I got in and I went to that school and I was trained to run and I did that for a while, but then I didn't like it, so I stopped. Now many of my schoolmates of the time are athletes where they teach sports. They ask me if I regret it, but I don't. In my village at 13, you get promised a boy and at 17, you're supposed to be married and get pregnant. That's tradition, but I didn't want that. So I fought with my mom because of that. Then I took a train and went to Shanghai. I didn't even have an ID card, so I had a friend buy me a ticket and that's it. I just wanted to go there. I saw it in movies. And on the TV, the new speakers all had the white tan, the bund, on their back. I really wanted to go there just because of this. So I arrived, I went to the bund, and as I arrived and stood there and saw the skyline, it looked just like it did on TV and I cried like a river, just standing there and crying. That was it. I made it. That was the goal. But then what? I knew no one. Actually, I couldn't even speak Putonghua. I just understood a little bit of what people were saying. So I went to the train station, and there were a lot of people standing in line. So I stood in line, and when I arrived at the counter, I went back to the end of the line. Then I almost got to the counter, and went back again, and so on, until the clerk eventually barked at me angrily. And I didn't know what to say, so I just said, the same place as the person just before me. And I paid and it was a ticket to Ningbo, so I went to Ningbo. There, I came out of the station, and I didn't know what to do, and there was this guy, and I looked at him, and he looked at me, and asked me three questions, very simple, that I still remember. He asked me, where are you from? And I looked at him, I didn't say anything, I didn't know what to say. And then he asked, where do you want to go? And again, I didn't know, so I kept silent. And lastly, what do you want to do? These questions really stuck in my mind. Then, I just walked around. I was angry, so I bought one of those Hanan cakes, vegetable and meat cakes, really small. There were five yuan each, so I actually bought two. And I went to a park to sleep. But then the police came, and they brought me to the Pai Chu Suo or whatever, and they gave me a piece of bread and a yogurt, gave me a military jacket to stay warm, and asked me where I was from, where I was going, and so on. They asked me if I was there because someone bought me, but I didn't reply until one policeman asked me, what are you doing here? And I said, I'm looking for someone, and he thought I was lying. So he asked me, who are you looking for? I didn't know what to say, and I just said the name of my dad. And they asked me where my family was, and I didn't know. So I looked at the map they had there on the wall, and I read the district names, 
And in my mind I was like, one, two, three, four, where am I gonna go? And I said the name of a district. And the policeman said, oh, so your family lives quite centrally. Do you know how to find them there? We can bring you there as long as you find who you're looking for and you don't end up here again, okay? And so I went. And once I got there, of course, again, I didn't know what to do. So I loafed around until I found a store to sit and sleep. But at some point, someone came and said, hey, sorry, we're closing now. If you're here for getting a job, the manager will be in tomorrow. So I thought, oh, here you can work. The day after, I went there again to ask for work. And they said I could be on trial for five days. But if anything went wrong, I wouldn't get paid for it. And that would be it. They didn't say anything about the salary or food or accommodation. But I said, okay. And the day after, I was a waitress in this French restaurant. And I took orders and brought food. But of course the customers were all foreigners. The menu was really complicated, like 30 more items. And it was all in English. So when I would go to the table, they would be blah, blah, blah. And I understood nothing. So I asked them to point me to the thing they wanted. But again, I didn't know what it meant. So I came back to them with the food and it was all wrong. One day the manager called me in the office and it was this French guy with a big hat. And he started saying, you this, you that. But of course I didn't understand anything of what he was saying, but... Anyway, then I learned some stuff. I tried remembering the number of the alcohol percentage in the drinks to get them right and so on. And in the end I worked there for a year and a half. Then they moved the restaurant, now it's not there anymore. But later another friend opened a bar and I worked there as his manager. Because I slowly learned how to manage these things. And at that place, it was basically me who was the Laoban, because he, the owner, was never there. So that's how I stayed in Ningbo. Then I went to Shenzhen to find a job, but at some point, I thought that society, this external world, wherever I was, it didn't fit me, so I wanted to just go back to my village and stay there. But again, one friend of mine who was in Shanghai didn't want me to lose hope. He wanted me to avoid giving up on the world. So he bought me a ticket, and he brought me to Shanghai and I lived in his place in Hong Kong. But I didn't have anything to do there, so he told me I should learn English and then go abroad to study. But I didn't want that either. I even bought the books, but Shin Puzai, my heart wasn't there. I asked him, why do I have to do this? Why is it good for me? So we fought a lot, and I went back. But then he came to Yunnan and stayed in my place with my family. And my family was so warm to him, and he liked the music there, and he recorded some mountain songs from old people who would just sing on the streets. And he thought that how we lived there, with the cows, the fields and all, in the village, he was just like the pictures you can see in museums of tribes of 500 years ago living in villages. But that was real, you could live in it. So he liked it a lot and we got married. Then we went back to Shanghai, then we separated again, then he moved here, and I did too. So I feel that in my life, it has always been other people who have really decided for me. Quite important people at the time, for which I moved around. Some people from my village at some point went back and got married there, but I think that being outside, every experience makes me find myself a bit more. Yang Yang stopped telling me her story as naturally she began. Silence stretched over some other long minutes. Then someone else joined us back. The food was ready, it was time to go. I've never met Yang Yang again, nor managed to get in touch with her through friends of friends of friends. I went back to the city, and then to another, and then another, and eventually wrote this film note, which has never fit anywhere. <laughs>